Howdy. In this final video dealing with momentum, let's now take a look at a problem that puts momentum and energy within the same problem. Now remember, when do we use momentum? We use momentum whenever we have a collision, whenever we have an explosion. And so let's take a look at this problem. What I've got is I've got a 12 gram rifle bullet is fired with a speed of 380 meters per second into a ballistic pendulum excuse me, with a mass of six kilograms, suspended from a cord 70 centimeters long. Compute A, the vertical height through which the pendulum rises, B, the initial kinetic energy of the bullet, and C, the kinetic energy of the bullet and the pendulum immediately after the bullet becomes embedded into the pendulum. All right, so let's jot everything down. So the mass of this bullet is 12 grams, which is point 0, 1, 2 kilograms. And so what I'll do is lowercase b will stand for bullet uh, for my subscript and capital B will be for the block. All right, so the mass of the bullet is 0. 0.012 kilograms and the velocity of this bullet was 380, 380 meters per second. Okay, uh, it says the ballistic pendulum has a mass of 6 kilograms. So the mass of the block six kilograms, uh, suspended from a cord 70 centimeters long, heads up, irrelevant, uh, compute the vertical height at which it rises, so this H. So what's going to happen is it's going to collide into that and it's going to rise up. And we want to see how far does it rise up. Okay, so let's talk strategy. First off, the first thing that I'm going to do is use momentum to find, we'll call it V1. The reason, well first off, V1 will be the velocity immediately after the collision, okay? And the reason I have to use momentum is this bullet is colliding into the block. Energy is most definitely not conserved, but momentum is, okay? Whenever you have a collision, we use momentum. Then, to find this height, the second thing I'm gonna do is use energy to find that final height. There's no collision going on, it's just your basic energy problem. It's got some kinetic energy, and that kinetic energy will eventually turn into potential energy, and so we're just using conservation of energy. So, let's first use momentum to find V1. And so we're gonna have P naught is equal to PF, and what we'll do is we'll say to the right is positive X. Okay, notice this is a one-dimensional momentum problem. It's solely just moving in one dimension, left and right, for our collision, okay? So initially, we have the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet. And as for the block, the, velocity, the block was just chilling out, so its velocity was zero initially. And at the end, the bullet becomes embedded within the block. And so this is equal to the combined masses of the bullet and the block, and we'll call it times V1. V1 is what I'm looking for. And so V1 is equal to the mass of the block times the vol or sorry, mass of the bullet divided or the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet divided by its combined masses. Which plug it in our numbers, uh, this is 0 0.012 kilograms times the 380 meters per second divided by the combined masses of 0 0.012 kilograms plus 6 kilograms. And so what I get for V1, let's throw that in the calculator, and see we're going to go 0 0.012 times 380, divided by, and we'll go 0 0.012 plus 6, and what we get is point, we'll call it 0 0.76. So it's now moving 0 0.76 meters per second immediately after the collision. But that wasn't the question. The question said what vertical height through which, or what's the vertical height through which the pendulum rises? And so now what I need to do is I need to use conservation of energy. Hopefully by now we're relatively comfortable with energy and initially all your energy is kinetic. All you have is that one half mv1 squared. And at the end, all your energy is the potential energy due to gravity, which is mgh. And so, if you have one half 
mv1 squared equal to mgh. Solving for that h, these m's are going to end up canceling, and you're going to get v1 squared over 2g is equal to my height, which v1 we found earlier to be 0 0.76 meters per second, all of that squared, divided by 2 times g, we're assuming on Earth, so 9.8 meters per second squared. And so what I get the height, so for part A, let's go ahead and square what we've got. Um, divided by, we'll go 2 times 9.8. And so we have 0 0.03. This is going to be, yeah, point, I hate you all, yeah, 0 0.03 meters. So that's how high this block is going to rise. And that's part A. Part B is what's the initial kinetic energy of the bullet? Well, we know what kinetic energy is. Kinetic energy of the bullet is going to be one half times the mass of the bullet times the velocity of the bullet squared, which will be one half times the mass of the bullet was 0 0.012 kilograms. The velocity was 380 meters per second. We're going to square that, and so we're going to go 1 half times 0 0.012 times the 380 squared, and what we get is 866.4 joules. So we get 866.4 joules is equal to the initial kinetic energy of the bullet. And then for part C, part C, what's the kinetic energy of the bullet and the pendulum immediately after the bullet becomes embedded? And so kinetic energy, I guess final, we want to call it. This is going to be one half times the combined masses. This will be the mass of the bullet plus the mass of the block times that V1 squared. Immediately after the collision, that V1 is moving at 0.76 meters per second. And so this is one half times the 0 0.012 kilograms plus 6 kilograms times V1. We got to be 0 0.76 meters per second. All of that squared. And so now whenever I throw this into the calculator, let's see, we're going to do one half uh, times 0 0.012 plus 6 times 0 0.76 squared now it's only got 1.74. Now it's only got 1.74 joules of energy. The rest of that energy got completely lost within the collision. And so once again, to make sure to recap, you're going to use momentum whenever you have a collision or an explosion. Otherwise, use energy.